episode six, a surprise for Mavis Russell. Relax, Miss Nelson. Just close your eyes. There, that's it. Oh, well, I, I feel better now. Good. Just sit quiet for a moment or so. Oh, Mr. Temple, I tried to commit suicide. Mm. I made up my mind that I couldn't stand things any longer. Paul? That I... Yes? Here a moment. What is it, Steve? You were right. There is a note. It was on the dressing table in the bedroom. Well? It's for Jonathan. Jonathan? Let me see. This is the only way out for me. I just can't stand things any longer, Dinah. Mr. Temple? Uh, coming, Miss Nelson. Could I have a glass of water, please? Yes, of course. I'll get it for you. The kitchen's on the left, Mrs. Temple. All right. Are you feeling any better? I still feel a little sick. Yes, of course, but you'll feel all right in a few minutes. You you just turned up in time. The note. I left a note in the bedroom. Please get it for me. It's here. Oh, give it to me, please. I'm afraid I've already read it. What? It's addressed to Jonathan. Who is Jonathan? I don't know. One doesn't usually leave a suicide note to a person one doesn't know. Mr. Temple, please don't ask me any questions. Please don't. I'm afraid I've got to. Who is Jonathan? And why did Richard Ferguson want the ring? I don't know. I tell you, I don't know. Please leave me alone. Here's some water. Ah. Here we are, Dinah. Now drink this. Oh, thank you. You feel better? Yes, I think you'd better go into the bedroom and lie down for a little while. If there's anything you want, we can get it for you. Yes. Yes, I'd like to do that, Mrs. Temple. Right. Now, give me your arm. Oh, oh, oh. I feel weak. <laughs> it's all right, Diana. Don't worry. Go and turn the bed down, Steve. Come on. I'll carry her in. How do you feel now? Oh, better, thanks. This hot water bottle's heavenly. It's awfully good of you, Mrs. Temple. I do appreciate it. I still think I ought to get a doctor. No, please don't. I'll be all right. Honestly, I will. Good. Now, Miss Nelson... You called me Dinah just now. I wish you'd both go on calling me Dinah. It's much more friendly. Very well, Dinah. Tell me, do you know why we came here tonight? No. But I'm very glad you did. We came because Mrs. Ferguson told me to get in touch with you. Mrs. Ferguson? Yes. Well, why should she do that? Don't you know why? No, I don't. I don't know Mrs. Ferguson. I've never even met her. And you've no idea why she told us to get in touch with you? No, I've told you. I haven't. Oh. <laughs> now, Dinah, just relax. Dinah, when was this photograph taken? Which, which one? This one here. Oh, that was taken about six months ago. It's Richard Ferguson with you, isn't it? Yes. What are you doing? Just looking at the photograph. Yes, I know, but I didn't know real detectives use magnifying glasses. Oh, invariably. And bloodhounds. We left ours in the hall. <laughs> oh, Mr. Temple, you must have thought me very rude just now. I'm very ungrateful. What do you mean? When I refuse to answer your questions. No, I didn't think you were rude or ungrateful. I just thought you were being rather stupid. Look, Dinah, I'm sure I can help you over this business. Why don't you let me? That's the front door. Yes. Are you expecting anyone? Yes. I'm expecting Reggie. I've forgotten about that. Do you want to see him? Yes. Yes, I suppose I'll have to see him. Stay with Dinah, Steve. Yes, all right. Oh. Hello. Hello, Macintosh. Good evening, Mr. Charles. Oh, we didn't expect to find you here, Mr. Temple. No, we have a date with Dinah and You'd we... You'd better come in. This is a strong smell of gas. Temple, what is it? What's happened? 
Your friend Dinah tried to commit suicide. What? I don't believe it. I'm afraid it's true. Is she all right? Yes, she's all right. There's nothing to worry about. Fortunately, we arrived in time. Uh, where is she? She's in the bedroom. My wife's with her. Wait a moment, Macintosh. Well? I want to have a word with you. Well, are you sure Dinah's all right? I've already told you that. Oh, it's a very good thing you turned up when you did, Mr. Temple. A very good thing, Mr. Charles. Incidentally, I didn't know you two knew each other. We met in a golf tournament about six months ago. We've been firm friends ever since. Uh -huh. Had you a date with Miss Nelson? Yes, we both arranged to take her to the encounter. When did you make the date? This afternoon. I telephoned her. How did she seem? Well, she sounded a bit down, I thought. Of course, she was terribly upset when she heard about young Ferguson. There's no doubt about it. That's why she tried to commit suicide. I don't agree, Macintosh. What? I may be wrong, but I don't think young Ferguson's death had anything to do with her attempt to commit suicide. Well, what other explanation can there be? Miss Nelson left a note. A note addressed to someone called Jonathan. Jonathan? I've never heard of anyone called Jonathan. Yes, you told me that once before, Mr. Charles. What did the note say? It said that she just couldn't stand things any longer. Well, what things? What did she mean? You'd better ask her yourself. Well, I certainly will. Incidentally, please don't think I'm impertinent, but... You seem to see quite a lot of your sister-in-law, don't you, Macintosh? Yes, I've been waiting for you to raise that point. Uh -huh. Not that it's any business of yours, mark you. For almost two years after the accident, I never went anywhere. I... What accident? Mrs. Macintosh had a motor car accident. She was badly injured. If Reggie didn't take Dinah out occasionally, he'd... well, he, he just wouldn't go anywhere. I see. I hope you do see, Mr. Temple. Dinah's a very nice girl. Paul? Oh, good evening, Mrs. Temple. What is it, Steve? Dinah's asking for Mr. Mackintosh. Oh, we're just coming. She's rather upset again. She's crying. All right, Steve. <laughs> now, Dinah, my dear, there's no need to get upset. No need at all. You did a very silly thing. But thanks to Mr. and Mrs. Temple, it's turned out for the best. Now, now just try and pull yourself together. Reggie, I don't want to answer any questions. I'm... I don't want to talk about anything. All right, Dinah, just relax. Oh, don't ask me any more questions, Mr. Temple. Please don't. I can't answer them. Not tonight. All right. We're going back to the hotel. If you change your mind and feel like talking, well, you know where to find us. Yes, it's all right. Rudolph, I'm staying with Dinah. We'd better forget our dinner date. Yes, of course, Reggie. Uh, have you got your car, Mr. Temple? Uh, no, as a matter of fact, we haven't. Well, I'll give you a lift back to the hotel. Oh, thank you. Macintosh, if she changes her mind and decides to talk... I'll be in touch with you straight away. You can depend on it. All right, thank you. You ready, Steve? Yes. Good night, Dinah. Good night, Mrs. Temple. You may not think so, but I'm really terribly grateful to you. Well, take care of yourself. When you feel better, give us a ring. Yes, yes, all right. Good night, Dinah. Good night. Now I'll get you a nice cup of tea, Dinah. You'll feel a different girl when you've had a cup of tea. No, no, not just now, Reggie. Please, stay with me. I don't want to be alone. Yes, all right. Now, just as you please, my dear. Just as you please. This car runs very smoothly, Charles. Oh, yes, I'm very pleased with it. What make is it? It's a Lombard, Mrs. Temple. Oh, a Lombard. Hmm, I thought it was. How long have you had it? About uh, six months. I must say, it's a... It's extremely comfortable, isn't it, Steve? Yes, very. Did you buy it in Oxford? No, I, I bought it in London. Hmm. Second hand? Yes, second hand. You don't see many Lombards about, do you? Oh, I suppose not. I suppose they're too big for most people. Perhaps. A friend of mine used to have one, a very nice car, too. His name was Red Harris. Well, the thing I like about him is a quick getaway. It's, it's absolutely first rate. Yes. I say, I hope you don't mind my asking, but what do you do exactly? I'm an architect. Oh? Well, I thought you were an undergraduate, Mr. Charles. I was. I came down two years ago. Ah, uh, yes, your hotel, Mr. Temple. Oh. Well, thanks for the lift. Not at all. Good night, Mrs. Temple. Good night. You seemed very interested in the car, Paul. Yes, I was. Do you know why? No. Because I've seen it before, that's why. Mm -hmm. I've been in it before. It's the car that Red Harris had. The car we sat in the night he told me about the ring. You mean 
mean it's the same car? The same car. It's a different colour and it's got a different number. But by Timothy, Steve, it's the same car. Good evening, Mr. Temple. Good evening, uh, good evening madam. Good evening. Could I have my key, please? Uh, certainly, sir. Uh, the gentleman in 33 would like to have a word with you, Mr. Temple. He's in his room now, sir. Oh, thank you. Is that Sir Graham? Yes. If there are any telephone calls for me in the next half hour or so, put them through to room 33, will you? Oh, very good, sir. Oh, Temple. Oh, hello, Ferguson. Temple, could I have a word with you? Yes, of course. Let's go into the small lounge, shall we? Is there anything wrong, Mr. Ferguson? Well, I don't know, Mrs. Temple. I guess I'm just imagining things. At least I hope so. Well, sit down. <sighs> now, what's it all about? Well, Helen, my wife, she seems to have disappeared. Hmm? What do you mean, disappeared? Well, this afternoon, just after we left you and Sir Graham at the police station, Helen said she wanted to do some shopping. I guess that'd be about uh, quarter past four. Well, I told her to go ahead and said I'd meet her here at the hotel at about half past five. Well? Well, it's a quarter to nine and she hasn't turned up. Yes, but surely that doesn't mean she's disappeared. She may have met some friends or gone to the pictures. We don't know anyone in Oxford, Mrs. Temple. And Helen certainly wouldn't go to a movie on her own. Well, I'm sure there's a perfectly simple explanation, Ferguson. I shouldn't worry about it. I don't know. Helen's been acting mighty queer just lately. She... Well, when she heard about Richard, I thought she was going to have a breakdown. A, a real breakdown, I mean. Mm. Ferguson, when I asked her this afternoon if she knew Dinah Nelson, she said that she'd never met her. That's right. Have you met her? No, I haven't. How long ago is it since you saw... Oh, so here you are, Temple. Oh, hello, Elliot. You don't look very pleased with life, Mr. Elliot. I'm not feeling very pleased with life, Mrs. Temple. I'm not very pleased with your husband, either. Oh? What have I done? Well, last night I told you in strict confidence about my relationship with Richard Ferguson. Well? Well, tonight Mrs. Ferguson, Richard's mother, calmly walks into the encounter, apologises for her son's behaviour, and presents you with a cheque for £1,900. You mean to say that my wife... I don't get this. You're not the only one, Ferguson. Are you Richard Ferguson's father? I am, sir. And I suppose you're in on this. Now, just a minute, Elliot. Just a minute. Calm down. Now, let's get this straightened out. In the first place, I did not tell Mrs. Ferguson or anyone else that you'd been blackmailed by Richard. What do you mean, blackmailed? According to Mr. Elliot, your son was a blackmailer. Uh, He'd already had 1,900 pounds. From that's him. a lie! I'm afraid it isn't a lie, Mr. Ferguson. It's the truth. But now that the boy's dead, there's no need even to discuss the matter. There certainly... It was decent of your wife to offer me the money back, but, well, all I want to do about this business is forget it. What do you mean, forget it? Richard was murdered. If this story of yours is true, that means you had a motive for murdering him. I had, but I didn't murder him. When... when did you see my wife? About 20 minutes ago. Is she still at the encounter? As far as I know, she was in the cocktail bar when I left. Right. I'll see you later, Temple. All right, Ferguson. Mr. Elliot, did Mrs. Ferguson tell you that it was through my husband that she knew about Richard blackmailing you? No, I'm afraid I assumed that. Well, you were wrong. But if you didn't tell her, Temple, then who did? Yes, that's quite a question. Who did? So if Elliot's telling the truth, Sir Graham, then quite obviously someone told Helen Ferguson about Richard. Yes. Where's Ferguson at the moment? He's gone to the encounter to pick up his wife. Hmm. Did he seem very upset when he thought she was missing? He certainly did. Mm. Sir Graham, tell me, is there any news about Mrs. Gulliver? Yes, that's one of the things I wanted to see you about. She never regained consciousness. She died this afternoon, Temple. Oh, poor soul. I'm sorry about that. She was certainly mixed up in this business, but to what extent, we don't really know. Mm. Did you check on the car number, Sir Graham? Yes, Steve, I did. And that's really what I wanted to see you about. Mm -hmm. Here's a copy of the card. Now, uh, take a good look at it, Temple. Mm -hmm. 789 ALE. That's a Pasida. It was stolen two weeks ago from a garage in Chelmsford. Ah, 267 on. FLO. 
There's no record of that number at all. 316 FXH, that's an American Bretelac, uh -huh. stolen about six weeks ago. 574 DXD, no record. 769 DLC, a roll stolen three weeks ago. You uh, see the significance, Temple? I'm beginning to. You mean the numbers you've got no record of are, are the... Are the phony numbers substituted for the genuine ones. Mm. So that means the postcard was sent to Richard Ferguson so that he'd know which was which. Yes, it's my bet that young Ferguson was in this car racket, in it up to his neck. But, Sir Graham, what about logbooks? I mean, every car has to have one. Oh, yes. Well, if they can forge pound notes and dollars, Steve, they can certainly forge logbooks. Mm, things are beginning to tie up. How do you mean? You remember the car that Red Harris had? It was a Lombard. Yes. You said it was 246 ELF? Yes, well, it isn't any longer. Oh? It belongs to Rudolph Charles. It's been re-sprayed and the number's been changed. Are you sure it's the same I'd car? I'd stake my life on it. Hmm. But how does the signet ring fit into all this? Well, it's my opinion that it was a means of identification. Identification? Hmm. What do you mean? Well, you told us that a man called André Dumas was mixed up in the stolen car racket and that he'd been arrested. That's right. The French people have been after him for some time. We first heard of Dumas about six months ago. There was some talk of him coming over here, and the surete tipped us off. Hmm. Well, I've been thinking about Dumas. I'm not so sure that he isn't connected with this Jonathan affair in some way or other. Why do you say that, Paul? Do you remember what was on the signet ring, Steve? Yes, two letters and two numbers. A4 and D4. Yes, A4, D4. Well... Perhaps it's only a coincidence, but A and four letters might stand for André. And D for D and four letters Dumas. Yes. Hmm. I wonder if you're right. Yes. Oh, by the way, Sir Graham, when I was at Dinah Nelson's, I picked up a photograph of Richard Ferguson. It was taken six months ago. Well? Well, he wasn't wearing a ring. Are you sure? You can easily be mistaken in a photograph. Oh, I wasn't mistaken. I examined the photograph through a magnifying glass. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Uh, there's a call for Mr. Temple, sir. Oh, just a moment. It's um for you, Temple. Oh, thank you. Hello? Uh, just a moment, sir. Is that you, Mr. Temple? Oh, hello, Macintosh. How's Miss Nelson? Oh, she seems to be very much better, very much better indeed. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. As a matter of fact, that's why I've telephoned you. She wants to see you, Mr. Temple. I've convinced her that the best thing she can do is to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with you. Good. Are you speaking from her flat? Yes. Um, I'll be with you in about half an hour. Right. Oh, uh, you'll be on your own, I take it. Well, uh, except for my wife. No, no, I didn't mean that. I mean, you won't bring anybody else along. Uh, Sir Graham, for instance. No, 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 we'll be on our own. I think it would be best if you don't mind. I'll see you in 30 minutes. OK. What is it, Paul? Dinah Nelson wants to see us. According to our friend Mackintosh, he's persuaded her to talk. Mackintosh has? Yes. I wonder. Oh, um, here's my key, Porter. Thank you, Mr. Temple. Will you get us a taxi, please? Oh, very good, sir. What about the car, darling? Oh, I don't think there's much point in getting the car out, Steve. It only means that... Oh. Hello, Mrs. Russell. Hello, Mr. Temple. Good evening, Mrs. Temple. Good evening. Did I hear you ordering a taxi? Yes. Well, where are you going? Perhaps I can give you a lift. Oh. Uh, do you know Weldon Court? Yes, of course. It's just over the river. I'm going past there. I'd be delighted to drop you. Oh, are you sure it's not out of your way? Not at all. Hmm. Porter, we shan't need the taxi. Oh, uh, very good, sir. Thank you. Have you been dining here, Mrs. Russell? No, I've been addressing a literary society. I usually do that sort of thing about once a month oh. <laughs> for my sins. <laughs> it's been rather fun tonight. I was going great guns until some long-haired genius asked me my opinion of Schopenhauer. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> I was brilliant, considering I've never read him. <laughs> Probably never read himself. That's exactly. more than likely. <laughs> Do you think the police will ever find out who murdered Richard Ferguson? Yes, I do. But it isn't only a question of finding out who murdered him. What do you mean? We want to know what's behind all this. 
why Max Wyman was murdered, and why someone called Jonathan sent Ferguson a mysterious postcard. If you ask me, the police attach far too much importance to this Jonathan person. Well, that's a point of view. When did you first hear about Richard Ferguson, Mrs. Russell? You mean about the murder? Yes. First thing this morning. Mark Elliott telephoned me. Were you surprised? Oh, yes, of course I was surprised. I thought that you were very fond of Richard Ferguson. Yes, I was. Well, forgive my saying so, Mrs. Russell, but you don't seem unduly perturbed by the fact that he's been murdered. I'm not easily perturbed, as you call it. I'm the unemotional type that takes a great deal to upset me. Quite the opposite from Dinah Nelson, in fact. What do you mean? She was so upset when she heard about Richard that she tried to commit suicide. What? Oh, I don't believe it. It's true. Is she all right? She will be. Stupid girl. Yes. I wish that car would get a move on or let me pass. <laughs> Are you all right at the back, Mrs. Temple? Yes, thanks. I'm afraid there isn't a lot of room. That's all right. But I keep putting my feet on your hat box. I hope it won't mark. My hat box? Mm. Is there a hat box at the back? Yes, a small one. It's half under your seat. That's funny. I, I don't remember. Wait a minute. Where is it, Steve? There it is. Hmm? It's a small brown case with a leather buckle. <laughs> well, I don't know how it got there. It's not mine. Pull up. But we're just going over the bridge. Surely Do as I say. To... Pull up. Oh, what are you going to do? Mind your feet, Steve. Let me get the case. Here you are. Have you seen this before? No, I haven't. It doesn't look like a hat box. It doesn't sound like a hat box either. Oh, Paul, what are you going to do? I'm going to throw it into the river. Thank heavens Paul realised what it was. You're a very lucky woman, Mrs Russell. I don't have to tell you what would have happened if you hadn't given us a lift. You mean that, that someone planted that thing in my car so that... Exactly. Oh, Mr Temple, I, I just don't know what to say. Don't say anything, Mrs Russell. I'll move over. I'll drive. Well, thank you for the lift. Thank you. Are you all right? Do you think you can drive? Yes, I, I'm perfectly all right now. I'm afraid I, I wasn't very cool, calm and collected on that occasion, was I? Have you any idea who planted that thing in the car? No, I haven't. Have you any idea why it was planted there? Oh, I can't imagine. It wasn't exactly a friendly gesture, was it? That rather depends on your friends. Anyway, I'll report the incident to the inspector. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, and thanks again. Let's walk up, Paul. Don't let's wait for the lift. Yes, all right. Good evening, sir. Can I help you? Oh, good evening. Uh, no, thanks. We're just going up to Miss Nelson's flat. Number three, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but I'm afraid Miss Nelson's out, sir. Out? Are you sure? Oh, yes, madam. She went out about ten minutes ago. About ten minutes ago? Yes, sir. Well, that's rather odd. She's expecting us. I can try a flat if you like, sir. She might have come back, but I don't think so, sir. Well, we'll try the flat anyway. Yes. All right, sir. Well, there's no one in. Hmm. Doesn't look like it. I wonder what's happened, Paul. I don't know. What did Macintosh sound like on the telephone? Hmm? Oh, he, he sounded quite bright. Do you think Dinah knew that he was phoning you? No, I don't think she did. Oh, well, you can see what's happened. When he told her that he'd sent for you, she obviously refused... Listen... There is someone in. Yes. Someone's coming. Hello. What's happening? I don't know. But there's someone on the other side of that door. Who is it? Who's there? This is Temple. Who is it? It's Rudolph Charles. I... Well, what is it? What's the matter? I've been shot, Temple. Shot? Well... 
Try to open the door. Can't. Charles, listen. Try to open it. It's locked. The door's locked, Temple. I, I can't reach it. Oh, Paul, he sounds bad. Yes. Get away from the door, Charles. Keep back. Now, what is it? What's happened? Oh, Paul, look. He's bleeding badly. Oh. I'd better phone for a doctor. I've been shot. I... Temple, listen. I've got to tell you something. It's very important. What is it, Charles? Ferguson is the ring. Paul... I'm afraid he's dead. What was it he said? He said, Ferguson is the ring. That was the sixth episode of Paul Temple and the Jonathan Mystery by Francis Durbridge. The part of Paul Temple was played by Peter Cook and Steve by Marjorie Westbury. The play was produced for the BBC by Martin C. Webster.